I, you know, the WrestleMania opportunity, when you know, it's changing from no longer, will it be rock and Austin? Now it's you and big show. I mean, that's gotta be disappointing, right? Well, yeah, I guess, you know, the big show, you know, I forgot that that ended up uh, leading into my match, uh, at mania with big show in 99. Well, you know, it was, it was disappointing and it, and I can't even remember the match except for the spot where I was on his back and he squashed me like a bug. And by all means, I should have never walked again, but here I am. Um, but we did have that ancillary uh, caveat where the winner of that match got to referee the main event. And uh, so in a weird way, it kind of was a WrestleMania moment for me because after he squashed me, it made sense that I wasn't able to do my refereeing duty, but I came in uh, for the last five minutes. And I'm telling you, Conrad, the reactions were just thunderous like unlike anything i'd ever been part of including the title win uh you know in worcester it was just incredible and i remember steve just looking at me you know one two three looked at me said thanks kid and i felt like i was on top of the world so i did not main event mania that year but um yeah i still got a little mini mania moment out of it we're going to be talking a lot about that WrestleMania, your biggest WrestleMania disappointment, your return for WrestleMania 2000. And of course your WrestleMania moment, the match with edge, when we do our next episode, which will be Mick mania. Uh, but I figure, Hey, since we've talked about the rock so much, we should talk about the, this is your life segment. Fast forward to 1999. I'm sure you've mended fences with the rock, but. <laughs> the observer man went bananas about this because of the success in a good way or a bad way. Well, I mean, listen, it's a mind boggling 8.39 quarter hour. It's the, it's unbelievable that you've got the biggest head to head margin of victory that happens here. It's September 27th, 1999. It's a 20 minute long segment spoofing. This is your life. You've got. <laughs> Actors and actresses, the rocks, former home ec teacher, his former football coach, his former high school girlfriend, <laughs> super silly, super fun. But I've heard that people in the back, when this is going down, Bruce has said people hated it and were furious that it went long and blah, blah, blah. And then the ratings came in and I guess everybody had to hush. What do you remember about this? Oh, I do remember. I did not know how much Vince hated it. I really didn't, but uh, Vince Russo said later that Vince had to be like restrained or talked out of going out there and ending it himself because it was running so long. And it was like a train wreck unfolding in real time. And that if you go back and watch it, I guess I hadn't been in conference with the production team because I was just using the name of my football coach, Everett Hart, and they had to have a different name. I was using the name of my uh, kindergarten teacher, Betty Griffith. <laughs> And so the graphics are different than what I'm yes. saying. And I've probably told this story here before, but uh, I guess we can say it again. Uh, the coach who was like the senior member of the local actors goes, uh, do you want to run some lines? And I go, yeah. And Rock's kind of on the phone, you know? And I said, yeah, I'll bring you out. And uh, Rock will say something and you'll leave. And I'll bring you out. And uh, Rock will say something you leave. I'll bring you out. Rock will say something and you'll leave. And the coach goes, is this how you do it? Keep in mind, this is primetime TV, yes. live TV. We're not running over anything. And he goes, is this really how you do it? And Rock goes, yeah. And then I <laughs> I hear him say the words that Kevin done. Can I say Poontang Pie on TV? And I'm thinking, attitude error or not, you can't say PP on TV. And like, and then Kevin, I hear Kevin says, yeah, Rock, that should be fine. And that's why he said that she served him up a piece of that she wanted to serve him up and, and you know, you know, the rest. Yeah, there she is. She cut the rock off. It's at second base. He still harbored, harbored a grudge. So, but it was fun. It was the next day. So I don't recall Vince hating it, but I must've known he didn't like it because when rock tapped me on the shoulder and he, he said, you hear the ratings immediately. Like my stomach and my, my, you know, my heart sang into my stomach uh, because I thought, with his intonation that it was a bad rating. And I said, no, what were they? And he went, whatever you said, 8.3. And I went, 8.3? Like, that's not physically, humanly possible. 
And the only thing we can figure out is in the days before the internet or even texting, people had to be calling each other on the phone. So we went in search of Vince. We knocked on the door. I think in uh, past retellings, I've said he was hiding behind a couch, but I really doubt that he was. That's just my right to embellish uh, a good story. But I do remember he said, all right, you can do whatever you want from now on. And uh, so we had carte blanche to do whatever we want. We took advantage of that. <laughs> as well, you should. As I, as I recall, that happened in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. And mm-hmm. the next day, you guys would have been in Richmond, Virginia at the Coliseum. Mm-hmm. So that's where you would have chased him down. And uh, yeah. I love that, that you, you were able to have that moment with Vince and okay. All right. I think he said, damn it. Okay. Damn it. <laughs> and I love, I think, uh, on my biography that a and E did when Vince was asked about, it, he said, I thought it was good. I didn't think it was that good. And it, it really wasn't. But there was no denying there was some magic about it. And I think uh, the most beautiful aspect of it, Gerpel and I still in touch to this day. Let's do a few questions. Uh, Chef Akon wants to know, did you write the poem? I will not say those words you twit. I will not say I quit. Oh, you know, I did brother. I spent a long time working on that bad boy. Uh, JM Wagner wants to know, did you watch halftime heat? They tried doing in 2019. This was an NXT six man tag team match. Did you see that one? I did. And I thought it was a great match, but here's the thing. I can't remember a single thing about it. And, uh, Conrad, you and I have had the stars versus moments discussion. Yes. Uh, before, and I'm sure that, uh, from a match standpoint, that six man was much better, but, uh, we served up (laughs) a few great moments during halftime heat. One last question. Scott Norris says, if you were in charge of your creative at this time, how would you have booked the mankind story in 99 or would you have done it the same way it unfolded? Look, I couldn't have booked it that well. I mean, I had input, but I, ne- I wouldn't have had the gall to say I belong. <laughs> I belong at the top of the card. I did think I belonged as the pulling guard, opening up holes for the rock in his journey to WrestleMania. But so I was really thrilled. I mean, I had a great working relationship with Vince, both Vince's, Vince uh, Russo, Vince McMahon. So I had some ideas like, bro, we need what kind of match. And then, uh, you know, uh, hey, how about an I quit? Or maybe the uh, the empty arena. I think the I quit match was my idea too. But uh, I think they just did a really, really good job. I mean, once Vince got on board with uh, Mankind, uh, he really, you know, he really liked it. He was the one that made it possible for me to do the three face the Foley. So he had been a skeptic when I got there, but uh, brother, you know, he opened up his mind and uh, to the possibilities. And uh, I was really, really happy with the way that was booked. I wouldn't have had the disappointment of uh, uh, not being in the WrestleMania main event because I would have never booked myself in the WrestleMania main event. Now, now fast forward four years, I did try to sell Vince on the idea of me, winning the rumble in my return and, uh, challenging both SmackDown and, uh, uh, raw champions to a three-way dance. And Vince said, I have no interest whatsoever in doing that. And that's why I always tell people have a plan B because my plan B, I said, I've got this idea for Randy Orton. And that turned out to be, you know, one of the best storylines of my, of my career. 